All right, I'd like to start off by saying Barakat Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Racha HaKodash. Um, welcome to another lesson. By saying, um, just give me one second. All right, so uh, today's lesson is going to be centered around Luke, the fourth chapter. And um, I was re starting to read. I didn't even get a chance to read the whole chapter. I read uh, some of the verses in it and all type of scriptures and thoughts were going through my mind. I was going to try to finish reading the chapter. And um, I decided just to go live and share it with you brothers because uh, Luke the fourth chapter is, is a heavy chapter dealing with the temptations you know beginning especially at the beginning the temptations that Yahweh Shai went through and how Satan was was really messing with him really bad um when he was uh on this 40-day fast you know now we always teach that um we always teach that uh Yahweh Shai was being tempted of Satan, you know, after he fasted the 40 days. But really, if you want to get technical, he was being tempted from the very first day he started fasting. You know, he, he was being tempted of, of, uh, of Satan that whole time, the spiritual demon Satan. And we're going to read, we're going to start reading it, and then we're going to go through some precepts. And um, as I was going through this, you know, and different precepts are going through my mind. I thought about these times now, how, you know, the hour of temptation is coming, you know, which Lord is where we're going to hit that scripture also. And um, everything that's going on right now um, in our lives, um, these different situations and afflictions and uh, trials that we're going through, tribulations that we're going through, these are all proving grounds. You know, because um, um, them spirits are turning up, you know, they're really uh, showing their ass, you know, because they know that this is their last hurrah. So they're really putting in work. They, they're going, you know, they're going in overtime, you know, on, on brothers. And um, we pretty much have to be vigilant of these things because, you know, the, this is how, you know, just like the scriptures say, matter of fact, let me get that real quick before we move on. This is the book of 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, you know, because everything that we do on a daily basis, hourly basis, second minute is all about examination because, you know, those temptations are coming. You know, there's all different types of things that happen in your life, you know, whether it be uh, you being sick, whether it be uh, a job that you've been wanting, whether it be a woman that you've been wanting, whether it be a, a vehicle or something in the world that you've been wanting. These are all different uh, temptations that are trying to pull us away from the truth. Now, remember... Um, Yahweh Shai told Peter that Satan had desired to have him to sift him as wheat because he knew that Peter was a very important vessel in this ministry. So that's why he figured if he could take the head out, you know, he can have free reign on the rest of the body. You know, so we here, we, we're, we're all different pieces of the puzzle. We're all different parts of the body, you know, and we all uh, play an important part in this ministry, in this truth. And them demons is coming, they coming hard like that because they wanna they wanna uh pull us away from doing the work and discourage us. You know, that's the main that's one of Satan's main avenues is to discourage us to to so that we won't uh, uh teach anymore that we'll give up because he understands how valuable and how dangerous we really are. That's what the spirits really fuck with us because they understand how 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 valuable and how dangerous we really are. But you know, us being in the flesh, we don't think of ourselves very highly because 
we know that that we messed up, you know, our, our righteous, righteousness is as filthy rags, you know, and all of that. But we're very important uh, for this ministry. And we're very, uh, and when I'm saying we, I'm talking about all the brothers that said this, that's sincere in their heart. I'm not just talking about the apostles and elders or camp leaders. I'm talking about all of the men that are out there laboring in this truth and sincerity, you know. Um, we're all very important to this ministry, you know, we're all very, um, very needful for this ministry and uh, very dangerous, you know, and um, this is the reason why our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, uh, went through the things that he was going through, how Satan tempted him and was really putting the screws to him, you know, and everything else that he went through was, was a hard way was because he was the most important uh, element in this truth. You know, that is our mediator. That is our lawyer. You know, he's the one that through him, you know, is the only reason why we exist. Through him is the only reason why we have access to the most high anymore. You know, through him and the sacrifice that he made. And Satan knew that he was a key component in, in, in this ministry. So that's why he was coming at him so hard. So these demons are going to come after us hard because they know that we play a very vital role in this knowledge. You know, so it says, uh, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. So it's a daily thing where we have to examine ourselves. You know, we're in a time now where it's really mo just really just about the faith, just about the truth. Uh, and, and Shalom to the Akim on the comment board. The brother KDC put a scripture, uh, 1 John 3 and 1. Behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of the Most High. That's right. You know, and, and the only reason why we're being called the sons of the Most High is because uh, Yahweh Shai adopted us. See, people don't, they, they, they don't even understand what the word adoption means. You know, the adoption is Yahweh Shai dying on the cross, shedding his blood to adopt us back to the Heavenly Father because we were orphans because the Lord turned his back on us because we turned our back on him. So Yahweh Shai came and, 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 uh, and became that ultimate sacrifice to return us back into favor with the Most High Yahweh. So it says that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Therefore, the world know, knoweth us not because it knew him not. And that's why the world doesn't really pay us much attention because they don't understand the plans of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And the reason these uh, so-called Christians and anyone that comes against the truth, scoffers, and anyone that comes against the truth come against the truth is because those demons have free reign in these people's vessels. Because they are not part of the elect, you know. So like my man Bob Dylan said, you're going to serve somebody. You're either going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Satan, you know. So there's it, it, no in between in this world. Either you're on the Lord's side, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, or you're on Satan's side, you know. And the ones that are on Satan's side, whether they choose it or not, uh, Satan and his minions, they work in them to, to uh, uh, distort this word and to fight against this word. Uh, the brother, uh, Royal Seed, 2 Timothy 3 and 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, shall suffer persecution. And that's what we're going through, the things that we're going through. So it's a constant examination of ourselves to make sure that we're rooted in this truth, you know. And, and one of the, the a good sign that you are a man of the Lord, you know, even though we still say we're part of the hopeful elect, is them demons will fuck with you. Constantly, you know, whether it be uh, uh, spiritually in your mind or whether it be uh, physically in your body or whether it be jumping on people just to fuck with you, you know, it says prove your own selves. No, you're not your own selves. How that you how. Which is in you. And I shall want my, like I said, once again, to the brothers, um, GMS Armor of Truth 12, Psalms 26 and 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. And this is part of the trial, you know, the things that we go through, you know. And there's different levels. Like the Apostle uh, Tahar always says, there's different levels to this thing. Uh, yep, that's right. Apostle Gabar said, Bob Dylan would know. He admitted he sold his soul. That's right. And he's serving Satan. <laughs> All right, so let's let's start here with Luke 4 and 1. It says, And Yahweh Shai being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, he went into the wilderness somewhere where people don't really hang out. This is this is a, a uncharted territory, or um, it's not uh, civilized, you know, it's out there, it's in the wild, 
You know, there were no homes or, or communities out there. You know, there were no, uh, um, there was no agora out there. You know, there were no um, um, places where you could stop and get a hot meal. You know, or get or grab some bread or none of that. You know, so he was out there in 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 the in the, in the forest, so to speak. You know, in uncharted territories. It says being tempted, being forty days tempted of the devil. So he wasn't just tempted at the end when he was the weakest. He was tempted from the very beginning when he started this the, the uh, fast. So it says being 40 days tempted of the devil. So from the moment that he started fasting and went into the wilderness, Satan was right there messing with Yahweh Shai. And when I was reading this, there was a precept in the um in the red red Bible that we have. And it led us, and it led me, actually led me all the way back to Genesis, the third chapter, which is kind of heavy because this same uh, spiritual demon, Satan, that, that was that was plaguing Yahweh Shai was actually in the serpent in the garden, tempting Adam, which is Yahweh Shai, you know, tempting Eve, you know. So it's, I'm gonna just read. I'm gonna just read a little here, and then I'm gonna jump back to Luke four, Genesis three and one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord Yahweh power had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, had the Most High said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So here it is. This this uh, a person, this man in the garden that had Satan on him, said that he was more subtle than any beast of the forest or any beast of the field. Why? Because Esau is the most subtle creature that the most I ever created. And they were set up that way. Because deception had to come into the world. And this is the beginning of that deception. You know, this is the beginning of that temptation, which back then they didn't uh uh they didn't uh, uh beat, they lost back then. Why? Because it was all part of the plans of the Lord. You know, matter of fact, let me just read this real quick and then we'll jump back there. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 20. It says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. See, so who is the creature? The thing created, which is man. You know, really going all the way back to Adam and really the chosen line because the Lord really doesn't care about the other nations. We know what the Lord feels about the other nations. He said they're but a drop of a bucket. They're like spit. You know, it says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. So we had no choice but to be subjected to vanity or to sin or to wickedness. Not willingly, see? It's not that we really wanted to do this. We didn't really want to come here on the earth and, and, and go off because we were in the heavens with the Heavenly Father in order. And every time we go back to the heavens, we're in our proper order. And then when we had to come back, we don't really want to come back down here. But this is the Heavenly Father's plans. This is his movie. So it says, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. So the same way we were subjected to vanity is the same way that we're subjected to hope. And hope is what? That we will be delivered uh, through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai when this time of destruction and calamity and chaos comes. <laughs> All right. So going back to Genesis 3, it says, uh, and the and he said unto the woman, Yea, had the most I said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So here he goes with his deception, with his temptation. And the woman said unto the serpent, unto the serpent We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the most I said, well, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And she was correct. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For the Most High doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Which he was correct in that, as far as uh, being able to be as the gods, knowing good and evil. But that wasn't the point. The point was that the Lord gave the strict commandment not to eat of that of that tree, not to partake of that knowledge, because that wasn't meant for us to get at that time. You know, but it all had to go down that way for a purpose and a reason. Now, I want to jump down to the 15th verse because that was where it actually led me as a precept from Luke, the fourth chapter. It says, and this is the Lord dealing with, if you, if your spiritual eyes are open, you understand that this is the Lord dealing with the seed of Adam and the seed of the serpent, which is today in, in the children of Esau, which 
in yesteryears was in in the sons of Cain. Okay, if your eyes are open, it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, the thee being the serpent or the, the spiritual demon Satan inside of those those people, the uh the serpent in the garden, that man in the garden, which later came in through Cain, which after that came in through Esau and the Edomites, you know. It says, and the woman, the woman being Israel, because you know that the Lord compares us to a woman. But now if you read in this uh, uh, face value, you're thinking that it's talking about the actual woman Eve. And it's not talking about the woman Eve. It's talking about the serpent, that, that, that person that the Lord called the serpent, and Adam, which is the most highest woman. Okay? It says, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy heel. So this is part of that whole the, the this is part of that whole um um plans of the Lord. When you go back to uh second Ezra's the uh the uh, sixth chapter, it tells you from the very beginning that the Lord has set this up for the really the two main powers on the planet, Jacob and Esau, to be fighting against each other. And when them children were born, that's really what brought about the end because Esau had to do his dirt and his dealings on the earth. And after a certain period of time, they will be brought down and we would be raised up, which we're in the time now, you know? And that's the reason why, since Esau has the power and control over, thing, over, over everything, and because Esau is uh, into uh, witchcraft and into all these different uh, uh, um, warlock and, and uh, uh, um, demonic uh, um, chants and all of that, he is able to dictate who can rule with him in his rule world or who can have a piece of this world and who can't. You know, that's why when you go into the, um, into the uh, entertainment business, you know, you have to bow down to this devil. And this is what we're reading in the book of uh, Luke, the fourth chapter of these temptations that Satan came to Yahweh Shai with. So he, Satan, the actual demon Satan came to Yahweh Shai at this time. He actually seen the demon Satan. But this demon Satan and, and the wicked angels are inhabiting uh, bodies of these people out here that are not part of the elect. And that's the reason why uh, uh, we, uh, we did a video, uh, I think it was last week, a live show at the park and um and went into that how these these demons in, in, in invade or 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 dwell in these people out here and they come and fuck with us not because they want to do it because you're like yo man why this dude is fucking me i don't even know this this motherfucker i don't know this bitch why are they fucking with me but that's not it's not them it's those demons that that are in them you know because they they have free reign in there and those in those vessels you know to come and fuck with us if to prove us, to test us. See? So let's go back to Luke 4. It says, Luke 4 and 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil. So Yahweh Shai was tempted from the very moment he got into the wilderness and, and started this 40-day fast. So it wasn't just at the end of the 40 days. It was all throughout from the very beginning. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. See? So now when he was tempted, he was... After that, you know, shit, 40 days, shit, uh, we can't go with sometimes a day without eating and, 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 you know, without complaining about, you know, being hungry and shit. So just imagine 40 days, you know? So I just want to look up the word tempted real quick. It's uh, peirazo, peirazo, to try whether a thing can be done, to attempt, endeavor, to try, make trial of, test, see, for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks, or how he will behave himself, see? So when you go back here, Satan didn't just tempt the Lord. He said, look, if you be the son of the Most High, doing what? Testing him. Testing his character. Testing, you know, his integrity. You know, just the same that the, the Satan does with us. He fucks with us. You know, he, he uh, uh, you know, does certain things to us or puts certain things in our minds to our... Uh, um, to, to cast doubt, you know, on, on us, the, whether we be men of the Lord or not, you know? And we're going through that because we're in the stead of Yahweh Shai, and we represent Yahweh Shai on the earth now. So we're going to go through the things that he went through. It says, um, after, and afterwards was hunger, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, see how he tempted him? He didn't just 
say, look, why don't you just make these stones bread? Nah, he said, if you be the son of the most high, command this stone that it may be made bread. Trying to put doubt in Yahweh Shai's mind. You know? Hey, so like I know you brothers are putting real good precepts up, but I'm just want to try to get through some of this. You know, um, it says, command this stone that it be made bread. And Yahweh answered them. Now, Yahweh didn't get emotional. He just had to dig into his arsenal, spiritual arsenal. And he said, and Yahweh answered them, saying, it is written. See, going back to what? To the scriptures. That man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Most High. So now, where is this found? Well, when we go back into the Old Testament, which them so-called Christians do not like to do, which they claim is done away with. Deuteronomy 8, 3, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, Yahweh, doth man live. And that's the truth. Because if we do, the, that's what Yahweh Shai says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto thee. See? So we have to do the will of the Lord, which is what? To teach this word. And after that, everything else that we need will be given to us. But in that, in that, that, uh, on that path, there's going to be potholes. There's going to be speed bumps. There's going to be, you know, obstacles. There's going to be dead ends, you know, where, where you're going to have to reroute, you know. And this is all part of that walk because... We have to remember that we're not just out there teaching the word just to teach the word. We are learning how to become the next rulers of the world. Do you brothers understand that? That we are to be the next rulers of the world. We're going to have to direct and guide thousands, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of people. And even more. So we're that 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 tear that the Lord chose or, or woke up to learn this path, to learn how to be um, um, leaders, you know, because we're going to have to lead the whole world. You know, now to us it's like, me? But yeah, that's why the Lord said he chooses the, the, the uh, um, he chooses the, um, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, you know, and the Lord is the one that's putting this, this spirit in us to go through these things so that we can be prepared to rule the world. And then that's why at the end of it, the prize is salvation and also the laws being put into our inward parts. So we, we no longer have to say, uh, what scripture was that? Uh, um, yeah, you know, I forgot how it's worded. Um, you know, uh, it's in the book of Deuteronomy somewhere, uh, or maybe it's Exodus. Nah, because it's going to be in us perfectly. And we're going to be able to spit it out at the drop of a dime, baby. <laughs> All right, so going back to Deuteronomy 4 and 4. And Yahweh shall answer them saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Most High. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed, him un showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. And when I read this, it, it blew my mind, you know, it's stuff we know, but it's just like when you put it into perspective or when you isolate an incident, you know, this right here brought to mind Matthew, the 13th chapter. And you have instances where you have uh, guys out there that used to teach uh, in, in the truth, powerful teachers and everything, powerful readers. You know, they were like the ultimate Israelite and the, the kids of this world just just over overtook them. Because their desire was more to that than it was to the word. You know, the word was like a substitute, you know, or a band-aid for, for that wound that they couldn't receive, you know, of the world. But when that opportunity came, they took that band-aid or they took the truth and cast it to the side and, and went and grabbed what they really wanted, which, which was that fame in, in the world and that money in the world. Uh, so when this came to mind, I was like, wow, this like kind of blew my mind for a little bit. But um, this is Matthew 13, 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. And all these parables that Yahweh Shai spoke mean something. 
you know they 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 mean something you know they they uh in indirectly are speaking about something else it says when when, when any, so this parable of the sower seed is is dealing with a man that took seeds and went and sold the, everything the, the land was turned up everything was right you know everything was was uh, uh cultivated you know all that needed to be done was with the right seeds planted you know and this is what uh Yahweh Shai did he planted those seeds it says when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one there goes the wicked one again and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart this is he which receives seed by the wayside and i know a lot of brothers seen that when you come to the camp and you have a guy that stops and and you may have to start going into the word and then he's listening you know but he doesn't really get it you know but that 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 seed was already planted in his mind but something may come up to where uh some chick might come up or some dude might come up and say yo man i got this you know come on man. and somebody he knows he said look i got this new uh this new uh uh weed or whatever the fuck uh chiba or reefer whatever the fuck they call it you know i got some good shit right now man come on let's go and then he leaves and then that which was sown in his heart is pulled away or this chick you know comes up and he just says something and he he's in his mind saying i know i ain't gonna get that i'm just throwing it out there and then she gives him you know gives him the attention and he goes and goes with that chick so the truth is pulled out of his brain you know and many other different uh scenarios right it says but he that received the seed into stony places the same as he that heareth the word and a now with joy receiveth this so a man that comes he hears the truth oh man i'm an israelite wow we're getting the next next kingdom and they get involved they start you know getting the fringes and you know getting everything together you know buying the books or whatever it says yay yet hath he not rooted himself because they're thinking that it's coming right away see this thing is you know we want the lord to, to, to hurry up and, and destroy this place we want to, the lord to hasten this place you know but we don't know the, the same the exact hour so we can't set in our mind well if this thing doesn't come in a year or two then i'm, I'm out of here that's the wrong attitude to have even though we would we would love it to be this year <laughs> Yet hath he not rooted himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and, or, or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he has he is offended. You know, and when and at first everything is going good, he's cool. But then you know they say, yo, you know, we found out that you know you are yeah, at the job. He said you found out that you know you out there teaching against the white man. You know, and uh, uh, you know we're gonna have to let you go. You know, unless you unless you break away from that, or his woman might give him an ultimatum. So look, if it's either gonna be the, the truth with the brothers or it's gonna be me you know and he and he you know he'll be like you know what man fuck this i ain't signing up for this and he hits that back door you know so he also that received seed them this is the point right here he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful because Yahweh Shai said it best. You cannot serve two masters. You can't serve the most high in mammon because wherever your heart is, that's that's what's going to show forth. You know, if your heart is into the riches or if it's in, into the women or if it's into this world or whatever, it's going to show. You know, because you're going to choose that. If the, if the door of opportunity opens up for you to get that, you're going to push the truth to the side for that. You know, so that's why we pray to the Lord. You know, and we're going to get into some of these precepts that we pray to the Lord that, that we don't be tempted, you know, of these things, you know, because it can happen to anybody. It says, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. And it's, and it's according to every man's several ability, according to the amount of faith that the Lord gave that man to, to teach this word, you know. So, brothers out there, when Apostle Tara says, you know, do your three videos a week, do your three videos plus, you know? And if all you have is just the three videos, pray to the Lord to increase you, you know? At any given time, any little uh, news article you might read, uh, any information you might come across, that's a quick video, man. Videos don't have to be long, you know? So now going back to Luke 4. It says, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, 
All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So Satan has the power over this world and he will give it to whom he wants to give it to. But if he if he gives it to you, that, that means you have to do something for him. It says, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. So you have to bow down and sell your soul in order to receive these riches. You see? So these are things that Yahweh Shai was tempted with. So the things that we're tempted with in these days is nothing different than what Yahweh Shai was going through. You know, he just is the son of the most high. And, and you know, and he was a special uh, a power, a special spirit, you know, but he was still tempted because he was in the flesh like we are. But he didn't fold under pressure. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, now this is this, let's listen to the, Yahweh Shai's response. Get thee behind me, Satan, for what? It is written. So he went back to what? To the scriptures. Not fuck you, motherfucker. Ah, you know? Nah. He resorted back to the scriptures. Because you could say that, fuck you, ah, and get mad. Yeah, but that's not going to uh, drive Satan away. The scriptures say, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. You know? But sometimes you do get to that point where you just lose it for a hot minute. You know? But then we had to, we had to gather ourselves back. It says, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. All right, so now let's go to that. There's a couple of them. I'm going to just go to the one in Deuteronomy 6, for what I can remember what I was reading earlier. 6 and, uh, and uh, what was it? 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy power, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. So, Yahweh Shai went back. You shall not go after the other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. So that's what Yahweh Shai did. He went back to, to the scriptures and said, nah, man, you talking about bowing down to you? No. The Lord said, you ain't supposed to bow down or worship anything but the Lord, uh, thy power. And him only shall thou serve. It says, and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of the most high, once again, what? Trying to cast doubt in Yahweh Shai's mind. If Thou be the son of the most high. And that's how them demons come. They don't come. Sometimes they don't come to you direct. They come like a, like that serpent in the garden. That serpent in the garden didn't come to you. Look, eat that goddamn fruit. Shut the hell up. Smack it, you know? Nah. He came subtile like a serpent. Slithering, you know? Smooth, you know? Conniving. You know, like a fox. You know, just just uh, uh smooth with his tongue, with his words, you know? And that's how, how this devil comes, and that's how these temptations come. They come, they're smooth, you know. If thou be the son of the man of, of the most high, cast thyself down to uh, from thence. Now shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. So Satan was coming at him with this with the precepts. This is like them plantation Christians, plantation Christianity. They come with precepts, but they come with them uh uh them precepts that they don't understand, which I don't want to call them satanic precepts because they're not satanic, but the breakdown of them is satanic. They come in with that other gospel precepts, you know, uh, for lack of better words, you know. So he came with the precepts, with the scriptures, but he was taking them out of context. So this is their plantation Christianity precepts without understanding. Okay, if, if that makes any sense. It says, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, at least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Yahweh shall answer, said unto him, answering, said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power, which goes back to what? Back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6 and 16. You shall not tempt the Lord your power as you tempted him in Massah. And the other scripture that Satan quoted goes back to Psalms in the 91st chapter. You know, I'm trying to ca grab a couple of these precepts on the on the comment board because brother got a lot of good precepts um the brother kdc ecclesiastes 7 and 3 sorrow is better than laughter for by the heart, sadness of the countenance the heart is made better that's right um ecclesiastes 7 and 5 it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the re the the song of fools that's right uh the brother again romans 9 33 as it is written behold I, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and the rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And that's the point. Whoever believes in Yahweh Shai is not going to be ashamed, you know, because Yahweh Shai said, I will come and sup with you. Me and my father will come and sup with you. 
That's a great honor. Um, GMS, we at the end. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom, may, whom, whom he may devour. And, and these people out here in the world that are not awoke to this truth, they're not a threat to the truth. You know, they are, they are, I mean, if they are part of the elect, they are eventually a threat. But these people out here that are blinded, that are part of the two thirds and these other nations, they're not a threat to this truth. That's why Satan don't attack them. That's why Satan blesses them. You know, but the men of the Lord that are a, a problem, you know, and a and um and a menace, you know, to to uh to to these demons, those are the ones that they attack. And that's the reason why we go through these different temptations and feeling like we're going to drop dead and go back in the spirit world and you know, just all kind of manner of of things, you know, that go on. <laughs> Uh, the same brother, uh, Job 2 and 9, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse the most high and die. And that's what most of these women feel. And, and or really, yeah, the majority of them feel that. And then uh, uh, you have guys that in, in the truth that feel the same way. Yeah, I'm just going to curse the most high and just go back in the world. Fuck this. This is too much. I ain't signed up for this. Uh, the brother KDC, Proverbs 18, 7, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Uh, GMS, we at the end, Job 2 and 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. And that's true. You know, one of them foolish, foolish as women. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin, sin with his lips. And that's deep, man. You know, it shows you that Job was a man of great integrity and great patience. And that's why the scriptures speak about uh, in, in James, you know, look at the uh, uh, patience of Job, you know. That's right. The brother said we will be tempted, man. Yeah. And, we, and we, we, we're we going through it now and we're going to keep going through it, you know. But the Lord will make a way. Remember, the Lord said that no, no temptation is taken to you but such as is common to man. You ain't going, you, you're not going to uh, 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 um, pull an ace in the hole. Or, Damn, yo, you know, brother, I, I went through the, 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 the deepest temptation that nobody ever went through man i got i got i got the top temptation uh 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 top top five of the temptations they all happened to me you know because you got guys like that you know bragging about you know shit it says i do me i do me in travail uh first corinthians 15 56 the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law um kdc proverbs 19 and one better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is of perverse lips and is and is a fool. That's right, brother. Um, all right. So going back to uh, Luke four. Uh, so Yahweh shall cut him with the scriptures. Luke four thirteen. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. See, so he left him for a little while. But then, that did that mean that he that he, that he never came back? No, because after a while, the Lord proves you. Then he'll give you a little break. You know, he'll give us a little break. You know, a little breather, then here comes, you know, more like another set of, of, of tribulation, you know. Now, on this one, it doesn't mention it. But when you go to the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, it goes, uh, it tells you right here. Um, then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Because at this point, you know, at the end of the, that, that fast and the, the going back and forth with Satan, Yahweh Shai, his his the, the physical body was was wasted. You know, he was just like he needed the angels to come and help him and minister unto him so that he can, you know, um uh, uh strengthen himself, you know, because he 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 went through an ordeal for those 40 days, you know. All right, so going back to uh here. Um all right, before I read on, I want to just um go here. To the book of uh, Revelation 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. And this is the word of the Lord's patience. Because remember, you know, the Lord is long-suffering. You know, we're in the flesh. That's what the scriptures say. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, well, not. And I believe it is. Just bear with me one second. Uh here we go. Beautiful. Isaiah 57. And let me see if you got a little more. All right. Oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. This is this is this is some this is some 
This is some beautiful. This is beautiful. Uh, let me just go to Isaiah 57, 14. And shall say, cast you up, cast you up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. And that's what's happening too, to the elect, those stumbling blocks of the world are being pulled out of the way, you know, for brothers to wake up, you know, for all of us to have, have woken up. For thus, the, thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I will dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. See, because we need that revival. Just like Yahweh Shai was revived. This is heavy, man. Just like Yahweh Shai was revived, we need the revival. Because we, we, we're going through the heat of the day and catching hell. And we need we need uh, uh, help. You know, we need succor. You know, we need help, man. And to revive the heart of the contract ones, you know. Because the scriptures say, uh, um, a hope that is deferred maketh the heart sick. You know, so our hearts are sick. But we still have that hope that, that the Lord is coming to deliver us because he is coming to deliver us. But being in the flesh, you know, we we you know we go through that. You know, there's another scripture in the Apocrypha that says that uh that the heart muses upon many, many things. You know, the 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 the, the uh flesh weighs down the spirit pretty much. For I will not contend forever. This is the Lord saying this. Yahweh was saying, I will not contend forever. He's not gonna fight against us forever. You know, he's not going to keep us in these situations of, of tests and trials forever. Neither will I be always wroth, for the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. So if the Lord was to continually kick us in the ass and not give us any help, we would all just just fail. There would be nobody, no flesh left to be said. There will be nothing. So the Lord said he's not going to contend with us forever because he knows what's in us. He knows uh, um. He knows that we only have so much strength, you know, so he has to step in and, 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 and uh, secure us and help us. OK, so going back to uh, I'm sorry, going back to Revelation three, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation and the hour of temptation is coming. You know, the final the final uh, curtain call, so to speak, of the of the of the hour of temptation is the microchip. But you're going to have other things leading up to it, you know, such as anarchy, um, martial law, uh, concentration camps, FEMA troops, you know, uh, false flags, you know, different, just different uh, uh, things that are going to be happening that are going to uh, um, test, test and try us. But the final one is this, the hour of temptation, which, which is uh, the, the, the uh, microchip, either you're going to accept it or not, you know, they're going to put. They're gonna put all, all of us on the spot, you know. It says, "Which shall call, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth." So the Lord is gonna. This is gonna be the heaviest trial that's gonna happen. Now, we have a, a prayer that Yahweh Shai left to the disciples that pretty much left to us. Matthew six and nine it says, "After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven." That's why we have the Abba prayer. Uh, our father, so like, let me just pull this down a little bit. It says, uh, our father, which is Abba Nawa, which art in heaven, Shabbat Shemayim, hallowed be thy name. Kodash Shemka, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's what we need. Having rain, uh, food and raiment, let us be there with content. And forgive us our debts as we forget our debt, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. This is the key right here. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because these are those evil days that were spoken of in the book of uh, uh what is that? Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, in the first verse. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. So these evil days haven't come, but they're fast approaching. And in and as fillers until the time when the when the actual uh uh our temptation comes, there's different trials and tribulations that are that are that are part of temptation. Nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Uh Amen, or so be true. You know, so pretty much this is the times we're coming into, this hour of temptation. You know, and this is why we pray, 
you know, for the Lord to continuously guide us and protect us, you know, because, you know, hey, brother, it gets, it gets hot. It gets hot. The, 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 uh, the uh, kitchen gets hot at times, you know. All right. So um, I'm going to see what I'm going to read a little bit more on this, Luke. But uh, pretty much that was like the main point in Luke that I wanted to bring out um, through the spirit, of course. So I'm going to just read a little more of this. And then uh, you brothers, if I don't get through the whole thing, you brothers could read the rest when you get a chance. Uh, Luke 4, 14. And Yahweh shall return in, in the power of the spirit and get into Galilee. So he was refreshed. He was renewed. So after that ordeal, he was weak. But then when the angels came and ministered unto him and he and he got through that trial, boom, now he came with that power. You know, it says, and there went out a fame of him to all the region around the bar, right? Because the the uh, the power in which he was teaching, the authority in he was teaching he was teaching. And that's like now, you know, people out here, you know, they 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 know about about uh, uh YouTube, they know about the Israelites, you know. They see what's going on. They witnessing these these uh, uh videos, you know, and, and and the information that's coming out. They see it, and they talking about it. Yeah, Ezekiel the thirty third chapter that people are talking against uh, about the against by the walls, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Why? Because you could talk shit about the man, but you cannot deny his works. See, just like what they talk shit about us, but they can't deny. The works that are being done and the glory that's being shown through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day and stood up to, for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So let's look what he had to do. Look at this great work he had to do prior to him, you know, uh, 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 why before he was while he was being tempted. Oh, as he was being tempted, this is the next great work that he had to do. And Satan didn't want that work to be done. That's why he was trying to cast doubt in his mind. But then once Yahweh got past it, boom, this is what he's, he's doing. He went into the temple as his manner was and read from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, uh, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Bruised by what? By Satan. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So this is what we're doing. We're preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the great work that we're doing. That's why if you notice, if you brothers, you know, that are spiritual, when you go through a certain ordeal and you get past that ordeal, you notice something great happens. You know, something, you know, whatever, something spiritual happens, you know. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the ministers and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And don't think for one second that these people in the world are not looking to see what, what we're going to say next. Be but it's because they think that it's coming from man. But it's not coming from man. It's coming from Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So when Yahweh Shai is sitting there after he read, they're all looking at him because they want to know what is he going to say about that. It says, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. <laughs> I know they probably was like, huh? Man, that, that man, you know? So so that, that was the boldness of Yahweh Shai. And that's why they hated him too, because he was bold. <laughs> Reminds me of, of, of certain men, uh, 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 you know, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna mention no names in, uh, of of the of the particular group, uh Great Millstone, uh oh Salaka. <laughs> uh Barakata Yahweh Bashem Shai. It says, and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Because they didn't understand the spiritual aspect of it. Right? It says, uh, and he said unto them, You will surely say unto me, This proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever you we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in this country. So this right here, what he did when he did this, uh, uh, when he just read this thing and said that this day this scripture is fulfilling your ears, and these people were looking at him, looking at him with admiration. These are the same people that that at the end were were cursing him out. So these great miracles that are being done in 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 these people's faces, they're not they're not waking up, are gonna be a witness against them 
you know, in the long run. That's why in the book of uh, Daniel, the 12 chapter, it speaks about some are going to wake up, some to shame and everlasting contempt, you know, because th these things that are being done are being done for a witness so that no, so the whole world will become guilty before the Lord. And the only ones that will be without spot or blemish or guilt or, or uh, any uh, um, uh, um, stain on them would uh, would be the elect. They will not have no uh, uh, no guile in their mouth. They will have no stain, no, nothing, nothing to uh, um, to uh, uh, um, condemn them. And the world is going to be because the world is condemned. Let's go to um, First Corinthians. I believe it's the fourteenth chapter. No, eleventh chapter. And I believe it's the thirty-second verse. This is my favorite scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So when the Lord puts us through these different temptations and chastisements, it's to purge us from this world, you know, because the world is not being, uh, um, is not being corrected. They're allowed to run rampant. So the Lord is not going to protect them when that time comes. All right. So going back. Luke 4, 24, and he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when the when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And this woman, you know, that story, or that that which actually happened, that woman would would be considered uh, to represent the uh, the elect, you know, in that time, because the only one that he went to was her. So in this time, the only ones that the Lord is going to go to and deliver are the elect. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed save Naaman the Syrian. So this is he was which he was he had to be an Israelite, you know, for him to uh, heal him because you had a lot of Israelites in Syria. You know, so Naaman the Syrian was healed, so he would represent the elect. Only the elect are going to be healed, even though these uh, these accounts actually happen. But you could use certain things like that to prove the elect. You know who the that the Lord is only dealing with a small number, like uh, the Apostle Paul did in Romans the eleventh chapter. All right. Uh, verse twenty eight. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. See, they were angry because he cursed them out and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to a brow of the hill where on their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. So they tried to throw him off a cliff, man, throw him off a mountain. But he 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 made his he made his moves, you know, like Apostle said years ago, he did those ninja tactics and went through all the people and boom, and he and he bounced. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. So he he was, you know, like like uh you talking about. Juking some, you know, juking somebody when you want you know, to play in a football shit. Yeah, I wish I was the ultimate uh, uh, running back, so to speak. You know, you know, he was going through them people, you know, and, and and maneuvering and getting out the way. They were trying to grab him. He was spinning, you know, and they couldn't get, they couldn't get him. You know, <laughs> so like and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. That's what the, why the apostle Paul said, I will not know the word of them that are puffed up, but the power. <coughs> Salaki, brother, Salaki. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of, un, of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Yahweh Shai of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of the Most High. So them spirits knew who Yahweh Shai was, and them spirits know who we are. That's why they, they come and attack us and mess with us and bother us, you know, to try to uh, 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 sway us from teaching. That's the main reason why they come at us, because we're a threat to them, you know. And Yahweh Shai rebuked them, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Because we have power over those spirits, you know. But the problem is, being in his flesh, 
sometimes we 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 like fall back and are nervous, and them spirits just like dogs, they sense a weakness, they sense uh fear, and they play on that fear. But then when you turn around and be like, fuck, you know, get the fuck out of here, you know? Then they does ah oh, shit, man. We you know we better split, man. This dude, he's he's he, he's on a rampage, you know. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked her the fever. <laughs> Damn. And it left her. And immediately she rose and ministered unto them. Because these them sicknesses really that's all demons, man. Demons that have their way with, with certain organs, you know, certain parts of our bodies to really put the squeeze on them, you know. But really, you know, the Lord is the one that has uh, control over uh, life and death. Now, when the sun was setting, all they had, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. And this pretty much you could use this to, like, like, I mean, this is uh, this is literal. But if you look at it spiritually today, you know, all these Jakes out here that, that once were sick in the mind, the Lord healed us, you know, of all these different sicknesses and woke us up to the truth, you know. And devils also came out of many, see, because like I was saying earlier, and in, in, in we say in other uh, um, lessons, that these spirits, they, 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 habit, they inhabit these people's bodies that are not awoke to the truth, you know, and they use them. To 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 come against uh, our brothers to 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 you know give us a hard way to go, it says. And the devils also came out of many. See, crying out and saying, "Thou art the anointed, the son of the Most High." And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the anointed. So they knew he was the anointed. We represent Yahweh Shai on the earth, so they know who we are, and they know who's a threat and who's not a threat. And when it was day, he departed and went into the, a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and, sta and stayed him that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of the Most High to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogue of Galilee. You know, so bottom line is there's going to be temptations. Them demons are coming at us because we are a threat to, to uh, Esau's kingdom. And these, these demons right now, you know, there's not new demons that come up. They're all the same demons. And they just, they just, uh. They, they come with the different kingdoms. That's a gift that the, the different kingdoms have, you know, on the left-hand side. So these same demons that are working with Esau now, we're working with the Roman Empire. We're working with the Greek Empire. We're working with the Medio persian Empire. We're working with the Babylonian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, you know, the Egyptian Empire, and all the different empires that rule on the planet Earth, you know, at, at, at one point or another. So it's the same demons that's messing with them. I mean, that's working with them, and and they mess with us because they know that we're a threat, and that we that the words that we speak, which are the words of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, will bring them down from their power eventually, you know. Um, so with that, that's pretty much all I have. You know, I hope your brothers have been edified. I know your brothers were putting a lot of good precepts up, and uh, I was only going to read a couple more verses in uh, Luke four, but the Spirit wanted me to read the whole thing because this this is a powerful chapter, man. Uh, so with that, I hope you brothers have been edified until the next time I say Shalom. Stay strong, brother. Stay strong. Stay strong. Stay strong.